nothing is antithetical to that. I, I, I think Bitcoin is antithetical to the ideals of America hegemony. I think Bitcoin is, is rooted in the ideal of freedom, total freedom. And but you, every, the U.S. Do you not we're, think we're the 20%, U.S. Is- we're twenty percent of the transactions of Bitcoin. It's it's a global asset. The Bitcoin sell-off caused a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt for weeks. Now that the price of a Bitcoin is over four hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars. The Bitcoin space is once again positive and exciting for investors. BTC has gone up 12% in the last five days. The DJIA is up 64% in the last six months and 12.62% over the past year. In contrast, the SNP index, which is at an all-time high, is only up 21.5% in a year and 12.6% in six months. In one of his most recent tweets, senior Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balunas says that the current rally is due to the huge success of the newly launched spot Bitcoin ETS. The Bloomberg analyst posts a chart that shows how well the new funds have done. A tweet that goes with it says, here's a look at the top 25 ETFs by assets after one month on the market out of 5 million. $535 total launches in 30 years. BlackRock's IBIT and Fidelity's FIT are the only ones with more than $3 billion and they still have two days to go. In a second tweet, ARK's ARB and Bitwise's Bit were also added to the list. Eric gives us another important number that compares the performance of the top two Bitcoin ETFs to those of the other funds on the list. His tweet says that a lot of these are ESG, bring your own assets, BS, which means that there is only one investor behind the whole AUM. To tell the difference between organic and BO, I looked at the percentage of days they had inflows in the first month of trading. IBIT and FBTT are both 100%, and the $6 billion plus in volume is unheard of. This chart shows that BlackRock's and Fidelity's Bitcoin ETFs have had inflows every day since launch, while Betos have had none. Mark Yuso talks about how important these milestones are and what they will mean for Bitcoin prices in the weeks before the 2024 election. As crazy as prices have been this week, as we get closer to the big event in April, Mark thinks things will get even crazier. He thinks they will go completely crazy after the much-anticipated event. Here are clips from Yo's conversation with Blockworks. Mike Polito, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this video if you want to see more like it. Thanks and have fun watching the video. Not the two best starts of the last five years. Not the two best starts of commodity ETFs. Not the two best starts of ETFs run by the largest institutions in the world. Two of the best starts of all ETFs. That's this is simply a supply and demand story. And, and look, we, we talked about this for, for months leading up to the eventual approval, um, which we nailed, by the way. I mean, we we're off by two days, three days, but but we nailed it. Well, you you um, know, to be honest, you you're calling it to me. <laughs> well, but not we. Where where are we? So and I, I think what, what people just haven't internalized is it's this two-step process, right? Is we had the demand shock, which is this sailor-esque appetite, but not a one-time. I mean, Michael was like a one-time chomp and then he'd digest and then he'd chomp and then he'd digest kind of like a, a dinosaur, or, you know, p- python. And this is more of, uh, yeah, I don't know what the most voracious jungle cat is that, you know, is eating and hunting, you know, not daily, but, but weekly. I mean, it's, this is, and this is going to go on for a very long time because of the resistance from the powers that be, right? You know, everyone who aligns with, the Warren clan said, nope, nope, that's not welcome here. Those those new ETFs, they're not welcome here. And one by one, over time, that's going to fall and it's going to increase the amount of capital that's trying to squish through the gate. And um, 
And, and, and again, I don't, I, don't, I don't like this analogy because it's, it's, it's frightening. Um, so we went to the, uh, the Duke basketball game, Duke UNC basketball game last Saturday. And, uh, you know, the right team won, you know, North Carolina won. And we were coming out and I, it's my wife and I and, and my 13 year old and his buddy. And, you know, everything come, everyone goes in at different times, but everyone comes out at the same time. And everyone's coming out and you're going through and there's this narrow doorway and we get through the doorway and there's this stairway down to the street and this group of very drunk, very rambunctious guys, of course it was guys, um, starts running through the crowd. And the kids got caught up in it and started to go down and you could just see what was about to happen and, and nothing bad happened, but it's, it's that, that when everyone f suddenly FOMOs and, and other people started running, cause well, if they're running, there must be no, 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 no. So um, I, that's kind of what I feel is that people are waking up to. While they were talking, Mark also talked about Russian president Vladimir Putin's recent interview with Tucker Carlson. The interview has been seen over 12 million times on YouTube and almost 200 million times on Twitter. Putin talked about many things, including how the US dollar is losing its position as the world's reserve currency. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that the US political leadership makes a big mistake when they use the dollar as a weapon in foreign policy. He said that this is one of the biggest strategic mistakes the US political leadership has ever made. Putin went on to say that the dollar is the cornerstone of US power and the main weapon the U.S. uses to keep its power around the world whenever the political leadership decides to do so. I don't want to use bad language, but what you're doing is stupid and a big mistake. Putin went on to say that even our allies are now lowering their dollar reserves to avoid the same thing that happened to Russia. Putin also said that about 80% of Russia's foreign trade was done in U.S. dollars and euros, but that number is now down to 133%. In comparison, the country has increased its use of the Chinese yuan, which went from 3% to a little over 34% today. Let's go back to Mark's interview where he talks about how the dollar is being used as a weapon and how our political class is inefficient and corrupt. The, the, the thing is, when you have a demand shock, price rises. And that's what we're seeing. But now we're about to have a supply shock. And that supply shock guaranteed whether it's 417 418 you know people are wishing it's 420 it doesn't really matter what day it is it's happening and we're going to go from 900 a day to 450 a day and at the amount of inflows okay that's happening right now we're buying three times the current production that'll turn to six times the current production but here's the problem that's only six times current production if the miners actually sell. But a couple of the miners actually were buying. I mean, literally, they, not only were they not selling to pay their electric bills, they were actually in the market buying. Now, that, that can't happen forever, but, but that's just a speculative move, people adding to their treasury, because they anticipate this, this move. And... Uh, you know, the other thing that, that doesn't get enough conversation is this idea of, of treasuries, right? You have MicroStrategy, clearly the biggest part of his treasury. You know, he's basically turned himself into a, a Bitcoin bank. But other companies have quietly added to, I mean, Morgan Creek has Bitcoin in on our balance sheet. Now, we're not like Sailor, but we have it. And it's funny, I... And my, you know, we're doing year end reviews. And my, my COO is like, you know, should, should we be, should we be you know, rebalancing, take, take some profits? I'm like, no, we suffered through the down. <laughs> we're definitely not rebalancing here. In fact, I might take my profits this year and, and roll them in. So um, anyway, that's, that's happening. Yeah. Mark thought that the United States was about to get another round of handouts. However, he warns that the stimulus packages, quantitative easing rounds, or whatever the new name is, will help the ruling class and the elites a thousand times more than they will help struggling citizens. To show this, he uses the pandemic handouts as an example. 
As a result of rising prices, most regular people have used up their stimulus packages. However, the billionaires who doubled their wealth during that time are still benefiting from the handouts. What do you think about Mark? Yo's interview, please leave your thoughts and comments below. Also, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.